students and welcome to this lecture in which we will discuss the difference between the two theories of VACPR and VBT. So let's get started. This is the lecture guideline. First we will discuss what is VACPR theory, then we will go into what is valence bond theory and then we will discuss what is the difference between VACPR and VBT. So let us begin. What is VACPR theory? VACPR or valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. It uses the basic idea that electron pairs are repulsed to predict the arrangement of the electron pairs around a central atom. Then how do we determine the VACPR of a particular molecule? First, we start with the Lewis dot structure for that molecule and then we determine the arrangement of electron pairs around every central atom in that molecule. Let us see how it goes. If you remember Lewis dot diagrams, it shows how visually we emphasize electrons. Okay, So it shows that electrons in the outermost shell and how they are arranged for a particular molecule. For example, let us take carbon dioxide. First, we will select the central atom that is carbon right and then we put two electrons between the both the atoms two electrons here two electrons here then we will complete the octet around each oxygen atom afterwards to fulfill the valency for carbon that is fulfill the outer atoms of carbon and you know get it to its octet state we will put two electrons from both the oxygen atoms so the octet for carbon is stable and for other atom is also stable. Finally, this is the Lewis dot structure of carbon dioxide, right? The next step in VACPR theory is to analyze each central atom separately. So central atom here we are taking talking about the atom with two or more atoms bonded directly to it. So first we will determine the number of atoms or non-bonding electron pair attached to it, not counting the bonds, all right? And in the next step, we will find the EGA or the electron group arrangement. Electron group arrangement, it can either be linear shape when there are two attachments to the central atom. If there are three, it can be a trigonal planar. And if it is four, it can be a tetrahedron. And with that particular arrangement, the ideal bond angle is also shown here. Correct? In the next step, we will determine the geometry by counting the number of lone pairs and the number of bone pairs. Say it, it has two, you know, the atom, central atom has two attachments to it and it has no lone pair, right? Then the geometry will be linear. Bone angle is 180 degree. For example, carbon dioxide. However, if it is three, you know, three attachments and there are no lone pairs, then it has to be a trigonal planar, for example, in BF3. However, if it, ha it has two bond pairs and one lone pair, the structure will change to bent shape, for example, sulfur dioxide. Again, if the central atom has four attachments and no lone pair, there is no electronic pair is present, then it will go into the tetrahedron shape or tetrahedral shape, for example, methane. Then again, if it has three atoms attached to it, but one lone pair, then it will become trigonal pyramidal like pyramidal structure in ammonia and if it has two and two then we will again get a bent shape so this is the basic idea of how we determine the molecular geometry of a particular uh, you know given molecule uh, hybridization that we will discuss later when we talk about the valence bond theory plays a role while determining all of this so using vscpr theory we give the spatial arrangement for molecules having a covalent bond or coordination bond. Okay, And it is based on the types of repulsions present in the molecule. There are three types of repulsions, bond pair, bone pair repulsion, bone pair, lone pair repulsion and lone pair, lone pair repulsion. This whole chart, you know, it, this one determines, is determined from this part C that we have already learned, right? So if there are two electron groups, it is linear. If there are three electronic groups, and no lone pair is present and it is trigonal planar. If there is one lone pair, it is angular or bent. Again, if the number of electron group is four, then and no lone pair is present, it is tetrahedral. If one lone pair is present, it is trigonal pyramidal. And if two lone pair is present, then it is bent. If the number of electron group increases to say five, then 
with without any lone pair we get trigonal bipyramidal so as to adjust all the ligands associated with the central atom if there is one lone pair we must give it the equatorial position because it is stable in that equatorial position then the electronic pair comes here and rest of the bone pairs we have arranged now it looks like a seesaw so it is the shape is known as seesaw again if there is one more lone pair right then again it will go into the equatorial position not the axial position just the equatorial position and this shape becomes a t-shaped uh, structure right again if there is another you know lone pair to it then all the lone pairs will occupy the equatorial position now the shape even if the number of electronic group is 5 the shape has become linear with three lone pairs similarly if the number of electronic group increases we go from octahedral to square pyramidal to square planar to t-shape it and then finally linear with increase in the number of lone pairs i hope this is clear let us learn what is the valence bond theory valence bond theory is a description of the individual bond formation from atomic orbitals of participating atoms during the molecule formation okay so atomic orbitals overlap to create you know and gives this theory of valence bond theory concept so it uses the concept of hybridization what is hybridization in hybridization atomic orbitals they combine mathematically and produce equivalent orbitals that orient to form bonds these new combinations are called hybrid atomic orbitals because they are produced by combining or hybridizing of two or more atomic orbitals we must remember electrons in a molecule must stay in atomic orbitals this is the valence bond theory postulates i hope you already know uh, all the postulates properly however we'll just revise here there are two conditions that must be followed for valence uh, to determine the valence bond theory concept in a particular structure first one an orbital of an atom overlaps the other orbital of another atom and the next is a, the single electron of each orbital come together to form an electron pair so these are the types of overlaps s orbital is spherical in shape so when s orbital overlaps this is what we obtain when s and p orbital overlaps this is the sp overlap position right so px py you know so that is how it is shown when p orbitals overlap overlapping here and here so we get this shape and then when p orbital overlaps with d orbital then we get this and then d orbitals will all can also overlap right okay so valence bond theory it explains how covalent bonds are formed by maximum overlapping so where vscpr theory is giving us the molecular geometry valence bond theory is explaining the formation of covalent bonds due to overlap right then some of the advantages of having valence bond theory is that it allows us to understand the covalent bonds it provides insights into the ionic character of chemical bonds it explains the geometrical shape of complexes later on we will also learn that it describes the magnetic properties of complexes and it illustrates the formation of inner complexes when strong ligands are present so this is a little bit you know on a higher level when you study um, valence bond theory at your degree level or master's degree level then you'll properly understand all these concepts but for now you must remember that valence bond theory explains how covalent bonds are formed by maximum overlapping finally the difference between vscpr and vbt vscpr valence shell electron pair repulsion theory predicts the geometry of the molecule whereas vbt explains the chemical bonding between atoms formed due to hybridization vscpr is based on repulsive force between bond pairs and lone pairs however vbt is based on overlapping of orbital for bond formation vscpr does not provide any details about the atomic orbitals whereas vbt provides details about the atomic orbitals present in the atom vscpr also does not indicate the types of bonds however vbt explains whether the type of bond is sp hybridized sp2 hybridized sp3 hybridized right it gives us the various types of bonds in an atom so let's revise vscpr theory predicts the geometry of a molecule vbt theory explains the chemical bonding vscpr theory is based on repulsions of lone pair and bone pair vbt is based on overlapping of orbitals vscpr 
does not give any details about orbitals. VBT give details about the orbitals present. VSCPR gives the geometry of the molecules. VBT does not speak about the geometry of the molecules. VSCPR does not indicate the type of bond present between atoms. VBT, however, indicates the type of bond between the atoms. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can look me up and you can ask the question there and I shall be available to answer. But do not forget to practice more and more questions related to VACPR and VBT. Keep practicing, keep learning. If you like the video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.